Welcome back to the Beast Speak blog. This is a series where I tell you what the beast has been saying to me and how I overcame it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the beast is your addictive voice, the AV and AVRT of rational recovery. If you can recognize that beast, then you can separate yourself from your urges, and that can result in immediate and lifelong abstinence. If you want to learn more about rational recovery or how to do AVRT, I'll link Virginia's story in the description box below. You can check that out. It's a good place to get started. So Oliver Wendell Holmes has a poem that he called The Voiceless, and it's about those who die with their songs still in them, unsung. Addictions don't let you live your life. Something else becomes the force that moves you. I know a lot of rational recovery followers are atheists, and I want to be sensitive to that, but I also want to be true to my own voice. Um, so I wanted to tell you, I was raised Catholic. I went to Catholic school in the early 80s, and as I got older, I learned a lot about the Bible. And I still cherish those teachings, and I do believe in God, but I don't consider myself religious. So from time to time, I'll tell you things you don't believe in, and that's okay. Please listen anyway. So the Bible says we're created in God's image. We're special, separate from animals. The kids watch PBS sometimes, and there's these little interludes between the shows. One of the shorts is called Animal Alpha Alphabet. And one day the letter for the letter H, it said humans. We are not animals. But that idea is prevalent nowadays because evolution is accepted as gospel. People like animals more than humans, so that doesn't help either, but they think animals are better than us. Shouldn't we be striving to be better than animals? Culture nowadays teaches people to hate themselves. We used to value what was best in humans. Now we say those things never even existed. But they did, and they do. There's this dark anti-human ethos that is very self-destructive. If we weren't made in God's image, we don't have to strive for the ideals of perfection, right? You can see it in the art. We don't draw human figures anymore. You can see it in the architecture. Nothing is edifying. It's anti-human. There's no regard for beauty or strength. Would God reside in, a place, in the place we have created when we're still killing each other? We think about the world we have created, but it starts in the homes we build or let languish. The hermetic law of as above, so below means the great can be seen in the small. Like a hologram, you can see the whole in the part. So build a home God could reside in. We can ask ourselves the same question about our heads. Is our head filled with constant thoughts of hedonism? What about our hearts? Do we wish bad for other people? And our guts? Do we have the courage to act morally? Is it a place God could abide? And that begins with us, not, not with telling other people what to do. It starts with yourself as an individual. Can you keep a promise to yourself, let alone to God? Aspire to be someone worth emulating. That's how change starts in the world. Since I've been applying rational recovery to my housework, I have been saying I can do it a lot more. I didn't want to do the dishes the other day, and the beast kept saying, I can't, it hurts too much, I can't. And then with the force of all my ancestors' hopes and dreams, my conscience said to me, you're lying to yourself, yes, you can. And I got up and did them. Stop believing the lie the beast is telling you, and aspire to be something worth emulating. Rule yourself, defeat the beast. As usual, please comment below where you're watching from and join me for more rational recovery content and the Beast Speak blog. Thank you.